yeah, I was my hope was that with Hellblade 2, they would um it would still be a sub 10 hour game, but maybe closer to like that eight or nine hour compared to like the originals, like a five to seven, you know, like just a little bit more extensive. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, now the, the, another criticism, main criticism that I, I heard was that um, Hellblade 2 almost plays more like an interactive movie. This I, was I did see that. This as was a lot. criticism I've seen a few comments like that. Yeah, there was a, this was a criticism that I saw from a couple of publications. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was interesting because these same publications um, were pleasuring themselves to Firewatch when that came out, and that's basically a walking simulator. Uh, so it was really interesting that that was the critique. But, but... Yeah, they're they're playing uh, essentially playing favorites. Hello and welcome to level 106 of the Thoughts and Players podcast, the gaming podcast with both takes and no strings attached. I'm Jeremy, here with my compadre, David. What up? What up? How are you doing this evening? Um, doing all right. I'm a little flustered, but, you know. Flustered. Uh-huh, how about you? Uh... Yeah, you know what? I'd say flustered. Yeah, that, that really? feels appropriate. Really? Yeah, flustered. Oh, why are you flustered? Uh, I don't know. I just feel it. I, I feel like I can't. I feel like things are happening. And I can't keep up with them. Plates are spinning. I'm a little uh, flustered by it. It's life for you. Yeah. But uh, making it work, doing what I can. It's what you got to do. Exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, chickens, ducks, hens, geese orangutans we welcome them into this level of the pod uh this is level 106 i think i said that before creeping on up there it's getting getting it's getting, going get, getting pretty high yeah uh four digits get, soon pretty soon four digits pretty soon imagine yeah. five digits in the six digit oh oh jesus exactly um <laughs> we welcome into this level of the pod thank you for joining us as we talk video games uh, there is stuff happening all the time. It's a little bit in that spring summer type mode. So there's a little bit of pickup with the story with gaming news and stuff. So mm-hmm, more stuff mm-hmm. will be happening. Um, when we're recording this, it will have been just after PlayStation had their state of play. And, um, there are some interesting nuggets. David, you mentioned they had, they had announced a, a silent Hill too. um, Yep, remake. Yep, doing a Silent Hill 2 remake. Um, there was also the announcement of a brand new Dynasty Warriors game called Dynasty Warriors Origins. They're taking it back to the beginning because everyone hated Nine so much. Um, but besides that, and I, here's the thing: I wouldn't even say those are incredibly interesting bits of news. There's just things right. that kind of stood out to us. Uh, it was basically a dud. Oh, game of uh, God of War is coming to PC. Oh, that's oh. Wow. Okay. I wonder how that's going to work. And like I, they did the site I looked up showed Marvel Rivals, and I mean that's coming out on everything. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that I mean, if you if we include that, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, the rest of them. Eh. Yeah, Sony, Sony, you know, sucks as usual. It's not. It's. It's. I mean, I, I don't. It, it is what it is. You know, they have their games and they're just kind of like in by their time mode until they can drop some other ones that the media will completely gush over for no, re- no inexplicable reason. They tell you this is 10 out of 10. They got some de- decent sales going right now. But overall, yeah, stay to play 30 minutes of nothing mostly. Uh, so we won't be talking about that really besides what we've just talked about in the past minutes for this episode. We're going to instead <laughs> uh, focus on things that we think are more interesting. So one of the things that are more interesting are the games that we've been playing. And guess what? If I have to Definitely. make the assumption, I don't think any of them are PlayStation exclusive games. So, um, how do you know? I know, right? Um, Jeez. it's calling me out. So, you know, Hey, uh, but also Sony, if you want to make some, if you want to make some, some, some movements, if you really want to get people going, I hear people are really anxious for a Bloodborne remaster, the remaster demon souls. Can you take one of the most coveted games of all time of your last gen? And just remaster it. That seems like an easy one, but whatever. I'm not going to tell you what to do because what I'll tell you to do doesn't consist of ripping off customers. So you're not going to listen to me. Anyway, no, not at all. 
let's talk about what we've been playing. I can offer what I've been playing, or if you want to offer up first. Sure, go ahead. All right, I'll offer what I've been playing because it's been one game. And it might have been the, I think I said one game last time. That one game is Fable 2. I've been playing Fable 2, getting towards the end of that. Not too long to go on it. Um, you know, just having fun. It's an, Like I said before, it's an easy RPG to kind of go through. And the other RPG I was playing before that's kind of easy was uh, Kings of Amalur Re-Reckoning. I'll probably jump back into that in a little bit. But there's some other things that I want to explore. One of them being a much more difficult RPG. I've talked before about um, how I've been watching a lot of Let's Plays of Project Hospital. That is on that is in my periphery, but that's not something I'm pursuing yet. The game that I may pursue immediately is a game that I've known about and really enjoyed watching for a long time. And that's a game called Kenshi. It's like a mm. sandbox RPG. It's super old school, old school style, almost kind of runescapey the way it looks. But it's super interesting. It's open, right? You're not a chosen one in this RPG. You start out low level. Um, you know, you can be enslaved in the game. You can be captured and eaten by cannibals in the game. There are so many different things that can happen to you. You can also get strong, raise an army, build a settlement, you know, um, um, down and take down governments and all these different things. It's really pretty much all you want to do. Um, they're currently working on Kenshi too. Can't can't wait for that to come out. Uh, I, I, that's probably some years away. I think they've been working on it six or seven years so far. It took about twelve years Dang. for for one developer to create the first Kenshi. So hopefully it doesn't take 12 years. <laughs> we can takes, hope. Maybe it takes seven or eight. But um, that's what I've been looking into. But the one I have been playing is Fable. So Kenshi is, is noted for noted for its difficulty. I think Fable 2 is pretty easy. So um, I've been able to kind of like almost do a max out on my character, farming stuff and uh, super strong and getting towards the end of it. I've played it in a way I haven't really played it before. So that's been cool. Uh, but yeah, it's mostly pretty much what i've been playing i've been meaning to jump back into pc games i will jump back into man lords pretty soon here i'm getting the itch again mm, um good. but uh yeah that's pretty much all i've been playing i've actually looked up at my computer over here and actually realized that for a while i was deep in the pal world i was pretty deep into it but i haven't touched it in a while so i'm getting a little <laughs> bit of an itch for that too we'll see what happens i think a lot of people uh, did the same thing with that game. Yeah, right. It, it was had that. the most hype ever, and then. Yeah. Well, when that was having all its hype, there was another game called Enshrouded that was kind of trying to have the culture hype, like the, like the counter the counterculture hype, because mm. you know, like one game's like super big, and then the people that that want to be you know uh, contrarians, they're like, oh, everyone's playing that game, but the really interesting game is this game. And it would be enshrouded, and it's like <laughs> oh, an, another survival game. They're both survival games. Mm -hmm. You're not interesting because you're choosing one that doesn't have little Pokemon in it, right? Like it, it's it's <laughs> it's interesting, but yeah, they both kind of taken a fall. But uh, yeah, Fable Two. That's what I've been playing, building up money, half a mil, three quarters of a mil hit in my pocket every time I log in. It's great. Heck yeah, man. Yeah. Uh what I've been playing is actually very little Apex. Mm. I'll play a match or two. But I I don't know. I just I've plateaued and I've I'm actually kind of losing the spark. Really? Yeah, and only only, you know, thirty three hundred hours later. Right. But I've been playing a lot of Dead by Daylight. I actually finished prestiging all the new survivors, so now I have all the perks on all survivors again. Okay. So that's out of the way. Now I just gotta work on the killers. Uh huh. That's annoying. Yeah. But uh it's been it's been pretty good going on the bad track and I'm flustered because I was playing DVD before we started recording and like three or four matches out of like the five matches I played, mm -hmm. I only played for like an hour and a half and I got tunneled and killed first in most of those games. Mm. So like, like the etiquette is, you know, you hook this survivor, you hook that survivor, you hook this survivor, but no, they would find me first, knock me, hook me, and then they'd be nearby. I get unhooked. They would hit me, hook me. It's like, come, can, can I play this game, please? Yeah. Yeah. So that that's why I was flustered. But uh, another game 
that I was playing and that I want to make my topic about. So I guess we'll kind of work it into there. Yeah. Is uh, Hellblade 2. Hellblade 2. It's the newest Boogaloo. No, it's the yes. newest sacrifice. Yeah. And it was it was very good, in my opinion. Yeah. It Everything I expected. And the graphics were awesome. The story was good. Unexpected. Like, I don't... I'm going to try and do all of this without spoilers, but this, like, it didn't feel very Nordic as the first one, like the okay. uh, Viking lore. Mm-hmm. You know, it still had the same uh, narrations and, you know, storytelling like that. Still very good. It was just, I expected more of that. Right. I guess, especially based off that initial trailer with them hunting them the the monster or the giant i guess mm-hmm. right if you feel like it would maybe go into a little bit of the mythos and the lore of the people of which Sanua is a part of i guess right yeah and it was mostly like you said I, what was in the trailer but uh i just yeah i just kind of want to talk about it for the topic i don't know how much i can really talk about it without spoiling stuff but okay we'll see so i've I've been seeing a lot of mixed reviews about the game mm-hmm. and the biggest uh, what's the word i want to use i don't know what the word is uh like gripe like criticism of it i guess the, the yeah the biggest criticism of it is a lot of people are saying it's just the same game mm-hmm it's like it's just a continuation Mm -hmm. and i i feel like that's okay sometimes we don't need a whole new ability or something or a whole new way to play the game Mm -hmm. you know it's it is hellblade 2 just a continuation of her story yeah i feel like i feel like there was a kind of like a based on that criticism I feel like people misconstrued the purpose or the function of the first one, where it feels like a lot of people think that Hellblade, the first Hellblade, was almost like a proof of concept. Like, this is a proof of concept of this character in the world, and the second one, they're going to build it out, it's going to be bigger, it's going to be God of Warish. And it's like, no, it's that's the game. It's this very kind of right. concentrated, you know, very kind of like streamlined experience of this character's world and story. Like, like that's what the game is. It's not, it's, it's not, it's not a proof of concept. Exactly, and I, I liked that. I didn't, I didn't have to like learn anything new and have to incorporate into other parts of the game. Mm-hmm. It's essentially, there's three, three things you're doing in this game. You're either traveling, you're fighting, or you're figuring out a puzzle. Mm-hmm. Very simple, for the most part. Some of these puzzles, man, sit there just staring off into space, it seems, trying to figure things out. I know. As someone who didn't finish the first one because of that, I know. (laughs) But as you can see, hint, hint, people out there, I did put a playthrough up on our YouTube. I did eventually get through them on my own. I didn't have to look up nothing. I almost did, though, on one of them. Yeah, but I was like, I'll I'll figure it out, and I did. But I I enjoyed that it was the same game, just a new, very good looking story. Because mm-hmm. these these graphics were awesome. Just yeah. staring, I was just staring at you know the backgrounds, and it, it looked very good. And the characters looked great. They seemed to be even more real than the first one and then the first one they did a very good job at that oh yeah so i was i expected it to be a little better but like it was a it was a good jump yeah the first one came out in 17 so i mean that's only you know seven years but that's more than other games and they had longer time right i think last of us it didn't really jump in the last last of us part two. 
You don't think like, like graphically that it really jumped that much? Yeah, like it. Of course, it did a little or, bit because it was on the next one. But does it does the jump from Hellblade one to Hellblade two feel greater than the yes. jump from The Last of Us Part one to Last of Us? Because I thought the last the Last of Us Part two definitely jumped graphically. I thought it was like graphic fidelity looked awesome. But I, you're saying that the jump from one to two is greater for Hellblade, and then also I think yeah, part two of Last of Us that was. That, that that's went that's from, technically last gen though too, right? Yeah, it went from PS3 to PS4. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that was a ten year gap. Mm-hmm. And Hellblade is a seven year gap. Mm-hmm. And it was a better that's that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but they're using that Unreal Engine 5, I think, for Hellblade too, right? That's mm-hmm. insanity. Pure insanity. Can't wait for Unreal Six, man. Right. Um. What else? Um. I can't really say much about the music. I mean, it was fitting. Nothing really uh, jumped out to me personally. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that's that's how it was in the first one. You know, I wasn't looking for something amazing. That's you know, I'm gonna want to download the the music off. You know, like I did with Omno. Right. You know, but it was played well into the the story and the fighting what about what so what about the fighting and the combat because the in the original hellblade it felt like again the the combat was simplified but it served the purpose it needed to is the is the combat in the second one is it a bit does it have more complexity that felt like that feels like an area they could easily add some stuff to without really like taking away from the rest of the of the game that's a good question, and they did. So the fighting was still the same. You know, you can okay. use your your special power, like you f- f- slow down time, and you can do damage to them faster, mm-hmm. stuff like that, and you still guard. But the the enemies were much s- more smart in this game. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you were surrounded by these bad guys, you'd be fighting one. And if, you know, as soon as you defeat it, the next person is, like, or the next bad guy, I don't know, that is is jumping on you. Mm-hmm. And they throw you around a little bit and you start fighting them. And I actually, I died five or six times in this game okay. fighting in the combat. Okay. So, it was, it was, it was more riveting. Like, I was... Yeah more on the edge of my seat making sure like don't die don't die even though i did but it was it was better it flowed better it wasn't like in one you 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 killed one and then the next one was like a couple feet away from you ready to the fight then they were jumping right on you it was more riveting it it kept it going a lot better than the first one okay Okay, cool. Yeah, I am a fan. I beat it faster than I beat Hellblade 1 the second time. I don't remember how fast I beat Hellblade 1 the first time. I think it was six hours, six and a half. Okay. But this this one, I beat it in five and a half. And Hellblade, I beat the second time I beat it in five and three quarters okay so it it was short right they're they're, that, they're shorter experiences yeah i was i was assuming it was going to be about a six seven hour game mm-hmm. so i mean even that extra half hour i feel like would have put a jump onto the feeling of how long it is i guess that's my only gripe is how short it was but it was still yeah still amazing and i still i still praise what they did yeah i was my hope was that with hellblade 2 they would um it would still be a sub 10 hour game but maybe closer to like that eight or nine hour compared to like the originals like a five to seven you know like just a little bit more extensive but um Mm -hmm. yeah now another criticism main criticism that i i heard was that um Hellblade 2 almost plays more like an interactive movie. This I, was I did see that. This as was well. a I've criticism seen a few comments like that. 
Yeah, there was a, this was a criticism that I saw from a couple of publications. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was interesting because these same publications um, were pleasuring themselves to Firewatch when that came out. And that's basically a walking simulator. Uh, so it was really interesting that that was the critique. But, but... Yeah, they're they're playing uh, essentially playing favorites. Yeah, but I mean they're not entirely wrong. Mm-hmm. But it's a it's a story game. Yeah, that's what I came here for. You, people know me. I don't play story games right. much, if at all. But this one and the first one, it just it was really riveting and. You could say it's a it's a video game movie, whatever. I'll I'll accept it. I played enough. You know, yeah. I, there's it's kind of hard to tell the story and what you want these characters to do while making the person play it. You know, do what do you want me to do? Do you want me to push X the talk? Mm-hmm. You know, they just they just flowed the game. Well, they know they want you to do like um. The Last of Us Part Two did, which is uh, when you want to open a door, have you repeatedly tap X? That's that's <laughs> what adds to the atmosphere and the engagement. It makes it a game. Um, but uh, yeah, no, yeah, I understand completely what you're saying. It's a story-driven game, Very. and a lot of times, story-driven games are smaller games, which Hellblade is. They're usually developed by smaller studios, and people may think that Ninja Theory is big enough to where. Why would they be developing a game that seems so limited in scope? Um, but I think that's what the intent of it is, is to make a very a very focused, story-driven game. They mm-hmm. really want to explore the world, and they really want to explore this character. And I'm all for that if they want to package that up in a sub-eight-hour game. I mean, it is what it is. That's fine. Um, right. The whole time, it really feels like the whole time, and again... I'm saying these things tongue in cheek because I've said before, and I feel like it's even more self-evident or more evident that the media by and large, video games media has a PlayStation slant or an Xbox bias. And it felt like a lot of the times that they wanted that they wanted Hellblade to play and feel like a PlayStation game. And mm. um, it's not. If you want to tap X repeatedly to go open doors, go play The Last of Us. If you want, um, <laughs> if you want these other games that have like emotion and grandeur and and a lot of action or different things like that, then you go play a God of War. Those games are great. They also have some of their shortcomings and flaws. Their scope and the scope of Hellblade aren't the same at all. Um, and so I think in the lane that Hellblade occupies, which may be you know with these storytelling games, I think it's I think it's the pinnacle. I think it is the I think it's the exception. I think it stands above all of them in that genre of games. Um, and, but it feels like they're trying to put it into a different genre of games that it doesn't belong in. Xbox doesn't have a lot yeah. of God of War or doesn't have a lot of uh, The Last of Us type quality caliber type of games. And it feels like people want them to make Hellblade that and Hellblade just isn't that. Xbox needs to find their way to make those type of games. Um, they may or may not never get there by the rate right. things are going. But they have to find that themselves. Um, but we don't have to try to force Hellblade to be that. Hellblade can right. be what it is. Because I don't, I don't think I would have enjoyed Hellblade, yeah, to as much if they turned it and made it into one of those type of games. Yeah, I don't want to play Hellblade to have an Xbox equivalent of God of War. I can just play God of War or something else. Um, I'm playing Hellblade specifically because I want to experience this world, and I want to, exp- and most importantly, I want to experience the world in Senua's story. It's the newest exactly. world, it's the newest story. This is the character I have the attachment to. As long as she is the focal point of the game, that's what drives me there. All this yeah. other stuff is it's it's you know, it's on the periphery, you know. That's that's what I loved about these games, you know, it's focused on how she is going through the worlds and mm-hmm. dealing with it with the psychosis and you know, she's fighting with multiple people in her head, you know, like Yeah. Most people don't have to do that. Yeah, and, and it, there's there's uh, an extra I watched about the like the making of the game, and they had a person that actually had to deal that actually has to deal with psychosis. Yeah, so they had like you know quote unquote expertise experience with this, you mm-hmm. know, and they made it feel 
real. And yeah. that's if they turned off of that then it's not Hellblade at that point. I mean, and, and just the idea, it just kind of shows just a ridiculous in some instances. Like the idea that I'm going to play this game that deals with such a real and heavy depiction of psychosis and different types of mental illnesses, and then you're wanting to say, yeah, but I don't get to fight Loki. That's like, well, who cares? Why are you talking about going to fight Loki? This isn't about that. You know what I'm saying? Like this, this isn't what I, this isn't what I get from this game. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so, yeah, it's, Hellblade is it has it's it's exceptional in its own right, um, and I think it is a very um, I think it gives a lot of gravitas and a lot of meaning to Xbox's collection and lineup of games, which are very lacking. I do find Hellblade to be uh, a shining a shining light in that, and so like I haven't had the opportunity to play it yet. I will play it, um, but obviously I've seen like some like. Your gameplay. We've we've done a whole complete game walkthrough in two parts. It's up mm-hmm. on our YouTube channel. People check it out if you want to watch watch uh watch the playthrough and, and different things like that. Um, I plan on playing it. Um, but I can tell just from what I've seen already. Hey, brother, when Hellblade three go? Where that at? You know what I'm saying? Uh, I I where hope, Hellblade three at? I, I hope for and the please day. don't let it, don't please don't let it be seven years. I need a game to save me from all these other gamey games. That everyone, you know, and again, I love gamey games. One of my favorite gamey games, you know, Ghost of Tsushima is very much a game. It is a gamey game. But you need something else that can kind of give you value and, and offer a different experience. And Hellblade does that in spades in a way that other games just don't. So, um, but yeah, was there, you have any other, any other thoughts you want to share about your experience with Hellblade? Yeah, uh, if you liked the first one, I highly suggest playing the second one. Yeah, that's what I got. I mean, folks is on Game Pass. Game Pass is like ten to twelve bucks a month. Just grab it for a month. Play both of them. You got twelve to fifteen hours there of exceptional, great storytelling that you're not going to get in a lot of games. I mean, heck, like we talk about The Last of Us. The main draw for me, The Last of Us, isn't the game mechanics, gameplay, game mechanics wise. The Last of Us is it's a it's a it's a little dog watery it's not it's not a, it's not a great shooter <laughs> it's not a great stealth game it's not a, it's not a great third person shooter cover system type of game right what gets you there is the story and the characters and how that and how that all is is going about and what ninja theory is basically saying is well let's let's strip away these 10 to 15 hours of dog water game mechanics and give you a story right and also like Again, like we're going to give you a story. If you buy it full price, it's fifty dollars. They're they're appropriately valuing you and telling you what this game is, right? So like right. you know, experience it that way. Or again, like I said, ten bucks Game Pass. Play that. Play the second one. Hey, if you got a PC, get a little bit of Manor Lords in. You know, do what you got to do. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, you know. Yeah, like you said, yeah they they could have charged seventy. They could have. You know. They could have did a Sony and charge 70. Yeah, we get this. Right. Right. And I mean, again, the other thing to keep in mind, too, especially with the criticisms and uh, and I think I said this before, a lot of these media, they didn't like the first game. They gave the first game six and sevens. Why would they like why would they get the six? The the second game, anything else? They'll hype it up because they're getting paid to hype it up. And then when the game comes out, they're like, oh, I don't like this. Oh, this feels just like the first one. And it's like, well. Uh, Awesome. Thank you. That's what I was hoping for. That's what a lot of people want. And also you could say that for most games. You can say that for most games, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it is what it is. What what, what do you got for us? So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it with new games that I, for this year. Um, but kind of uh, use that to talk about the past. So before, there's been, not before, many a times on this very podcast, on these very airwaves, and we're not on the radio, but I'm going to say that, we've lamented the existence of EA. EA is a trash company, okay? Clearly, it's just trash. Voted worst company in America, I think, two years in a row, or two years, whatever it was, twice, twice it was voted worst hey, company in America. either way, no matter what. I mean, I'm telling you. So we know that EA ain't up, ain't up to snuff. And a lot, there's right now a lot of hype circulating around what I believe will be one of EA's biggest launches ever. 
That is this year in July, NCAA football 25 drops. Now, there's a lot of hype. They recently had an event where media came to play the game. So those of you that play that game, that play games in general, you've probably seen a lot of articles being written by Forbes and uh, the New York Times and The Athletic. That's because all these people from their Ivy Leagues and different consortiums went there. They got invited there behind closed curtains to play this game so they can hype it up and sell it before the game comes out and they trash it and they act like they were on your your side the whole time. <laughs> these people are these people are grifters. I contend I contend that. Anyway, uh yeah, it's it's blowing up. The the PR ramp is obviously occurring. There's been a bunch of trailer releases for it. Now, I because we've said before, and again, it's the proof is in the pudding that EA sucks. I don't trust this game. But you bet that I'm going to play it when it comes out. Okay? <laughs> Cuz I got to determine it. It is an NCAA football game. It's not a Madden one. Um, so that had, I had me thinking like, you know what, huh, I don't enjoy EA games. And I had to think for a second, we you know what, what's the last EA release that I actually enjoyed? You know what? And, 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 and I sat back and I thought, and I'm like, you know what? I've actually identified a couple of them. Surprisingly enough from recent, from recent memory, mm -hmm. I was thinking, well, the last one I enjoyed was probably freedom fighters. And that came out in what? 2003. Or technically would maybe be NCAA football 14, which came out in 2013. So I'm like, it had to be 10, 11 <laughs> years, right? But no, because I've mentioned other games that came out more recently that were EA published games. And um, the two that I do have, though, are surprisingly ones that I didn't really think about. So I've got a couple. Um, I think I know you said you had a couple mm -hmm. uh, that you can think of surprisingly for EA games that you actually recently enjoyed. So I can lead off with this. Um, because I surprised myself. So for one, what I, what I, what you would think I would say of an EA game that was recently released that I enjoyed would probably be one of the, the Star Wars games, whether it be either yeah. Jedi Survivor or a Jedi, uh, Fallen Order, right? They're developed by Respawn. I love Respawn. And so you would think it would be yeah, one of those, but actually no. The most recent EA game that I enjoyed was a game released in 2021. Oh, and that and that game that game is called It Takes Two. Oh, really? It, it Takes Two was the co-op platformer uh, that was developed by the same developers that did the game A Way Out. Came out in 2021, and I really I, enjoyed that game. My I partner didn't know and I, that. yeah, my partner and I played that game. Um, and had a, I had a really enjoyed my whole experience with it. Think back on that time fondly. And I'm like, huh, well, who would have thought that not only would it be an EA game that was that recent, but it would also be a co-op one. Cause I'm mostly a single player gamer. Uh, but yeah, it takes two was one. I'm like, well, hey, well, what do you think? Of, what do you know about that? Right. My partner and I are actually in the middle of playing that game. Yeah. Yeah, and it is very fun. It's very fun. It's a little frustrating when you don't know what to do, but yeah. that's typical of any game. <laughs> or it's also very frustrating where, in our scenario, um, my partner is trying to accomplish something, and I'm off in a corner jumping around, not intentionally, but just because I have no idea of how the controls or <laughs> the actual uh, mapping works. And... Mm -hmm. and and she's pausing the game and looking at me and, and do you understand what we're supposed to do? And I'm like, no, I don't really. Right. Like that's, that's, we get a little bit flustered too. <laughs> We've had a few of those moments. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right, well, I'm, I have to add that to my list then. Yeah. It's um, pretty fun. Besides that one for me, uh, the latest I'll, I'll throw in two because I only played them both for about two hours was, uh, the Dead Space remake and Knockout City that they closed. Mm -hmm. So there's typical EA there because they weren't getting enough money from it. I could only suppose. Yeah, probably. Right, that was kind of like a live service dodgeball game, right? So yeah, and, and a... it, it was fun. Yeah, but as you can see, it didn't hold my attention too long. Just like Dead Space, I finished the first chapter, maybe the second chapter, and I haven't gone back. Right. But maybe on a slow day, possibly. It's possible. Like, I do look at it every so often. Like, I'll click on it and I'll be like, meh, maybe yeah. another time. 
Yeah. So there's there's potential. I do that with Resident Evil 4 too. I still haven't opened that up a second yeah. time. But those are your uh, those are your two outside of now people we understand you may be thinking, what? No, it would be Apex. We gave the stipulation for, for David, we arrived at the stipulation that it, it cannot be a game within the Titanfall universe. Because yes. they it would very easily ju- then just be Titanfall games. So um but uh Dead Space and Knockout City. That's nice. Um yeah, my mine was the um it takes two. And then the other one which came out right before it was the remaster of a beloved franchise, and that was when they did the Command and Conquer remaster. Mm. Um so they remastered Command and Conquer and they re- they remastered Red Alert, the original, the first one, um, and put that in a package together. And I believe it was like twenty dollars or something. Uh that's another one that I played uh and really enjoyed because it's Command and Conquer. And why wouldn't I? And games from my childhood. Right. Right. Um, I would I would say that um, if it had not been for that for Command and Conquer, my second one would have been Titanfall 2. Um, I, th- I think a lot of everything. Everyone knows how much I love that game. It's probably uh, my, you, you, you might love it more than me. Yeah, it's it's probably my favorite first person shooter um, or at least right up there near the Halos. Um, it's in that list, but yeah, mm-hmm. so but uh, no, it happens to be Command and Conquer remastered, they did a great job with that. Um, and so yeah, I mean, you know, those are a couple of releases when you think back on it. And again, we've talked before, hey, EA, but when we think back on it, at least I reflect on my time, I actually play EA games more than I realize. Um, yeah, you know, you're gonna, I mean, like. Not just play. I should rephrase that because I EA makes games. I'll play EA games, but games that I enjoy. EA, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> I play Matt. I don't. Very yeah. big difference. Yeah, I mean the the other big EA release that I enjoy playing would probably be The Sims. I mean The Sims has got to be the Sims, 10, is the Sims years old or something. You know? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So it, it's like I don't. I don't know. You know, they're buying IPs all the time. Like I said. You would think that it would be a Star Wars game, whether it be the, the the new Jedi games or maybe the Battlefront games or something. But no, 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 no. EA doesn't know how to get it right, but a few times they have recently for me. You throw enough, uh, throw enough balls, you're down to get a strike eventually. Yeah, 100%. or a home run, I guess. Yeah, since yeah, that's 100%. the good one, not the bad one. They get a lot of strikes. A lot of strikes. <laughs> and it's interesting. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say it's interesting because my partner and I had played It Takes Two first, and then we played A Way Out, which came out actually about, I think, what, four or six years before It Takes Two? Mm-hmm. So we actually played the newest one first, then we played the older one. And A Way Out is also fun. Like, It Takes is Two. It? It's okay. also fun. We, we got Unraveled 2. We haven't played it yet. Okay. That's another. Those, the, those platformer ones? Mm-hmm. And like the co-op games that EA has right there, and they're in there. I forgot what it's called, but it's like a smaller, like release publisher within EA. EA Origins, I think it is, um, or that may be the the launcher, whatever. But those are actually surprisingly decent games. They're surprisingly. Yeah, fun. I thought and it was like an indie game, game. Is what it looks like. Yeah, it's it's it, it, that's kind of what it is. It's like they're it's like they're publishing for smaller indie games. So like the it takes two and a way out falls under those and the unravel games fall under those. Surprising. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I was gonna say the the last EA game that I thoroughly enjoyed, besides the Titan Falls, was uh, the original Mirror's Edge. Yes. And we can tell how long ago that was. That was a while ago. I was in high school playing that. Yeah, that was a while ago. So yeah. 0- 07, 06. Mm-hmm. But man, I played the crap out of that game. I probably put as many hours in the Mirror's Edge as I did Titanfall 2. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I think the only other EA one was that um, that uh, Freedom Fighters game. I just, And a lot of hours by virtue of just replaying it. It's a linear story, so mm-hmm. there's not much replayability you can get out of one run, but just by doing multiple runs in it. Kind of something similar to, like, Fable 2. Like, I'm playing Fable 2 for, what, the fifth or sixth time now? So, like, it would be the same thing with that. Right. Mm-hmm. 
that's back when but we're, if we're talking mid to late 2000s that was that was the height that was peak ea that's when ea was making good games consistently everybody was into it and then when they started leaning on that free to play model or not free to play but live service model when they started really incorporating the microtransactions in the in the loot boxes that's when it all went downhill as it did for most of these big publishers yes so, mm-hmm. but ea has been the company that has been most steadfast with keeping those predatory practices mm-hmm. a lot of them kind of waver on it you know um ea is like no like what like our ultimate team isn't predatory what you know you got some <laughs> guy in freaking liverpool is like i've lost 78 million dollars i've lost my life savings on ultimate team cards and EA is like, no, that's not possible. And of course, you can be like, well, what idiot? How did you lose that much money on 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 Ultimate Team? And it's like, it's because they have a gambling problem, it's a disease, and it's an addiction, and they created yeah. a system to prey on that. That's the issue. That's what we're trying to get rid of. You know. So um, yeah, but we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. EA is. Hit and miss. I think didn't we talk about at one point EA is supposed to be making a Black Panther game? Can't wait to see how that looks when that comes out. That's going to be great. I can only imagine. Are we going to do an um, we should set a betting odds over and under, speaking of gambling on how, what what do you think is the likelihood? (laughs) Speaking of problems. What do you think the likelihood is that they create a DLC or a uh, payable character of Chadwick Boseman as T'Challa. And then, I mean, it's it's high, right? I mean, that's pretty scummy, but it's Electronic Arts. Is there, if there's any company that's going to do that, it's going to be either EA or Activision. You can't spell scummy without EA, right? You can't. <laughs> well, that uh, that is the end of my topic. Okay. Which leads us... Final thoughts. We can make a final thought about anything that is either related or unrelated to this podcast episode. So, who wants to give a final thought first? I'll go. All righty. My final thought is I hardly drink anything besides water and like bubbly water, you know, sparkling water, you know, Mm -hmm. stuff like that. But, uh, I was at the grocery store the other day, and they had Squirt, two liters, buy two, get one free. Now, mm-hmm. Squirt is one of my favorite pops. Yeah. So, I'm already almost done with my first one. Oh, wow. I, I've just been drinking out of the two liter. I don't need a glass. It's it's going quick enough. All right. And it's a problem. That's why I don't drink pop pretty much at all anymore. But it... It's delicious. I love it. I missed it. And I probably won't have it for another year after I drink all these. At mm. least. <laughs> well, that's my final thought. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, wait, so you, you got that and you said that you have more or you plan to get more? What was well, I, I it was buy two, get one free. So I had this is my first one. I have two more to drink, and then okay. I'm not gonna touch it for a very long time again. Now, and and that's the two liter. Yes. You intend to? Do you intend yourself to yes. drink six liters of squirt? Yes. Okay. This is okay. It was actually yesterday, actually. So this is 24 hours. Okay. So basically, a two liter of squirt every 24 is what we're looking at. It probably is probably what's going to happen. Okay, so we're recording this on a on a Thursday. That means that by Saturday night, Sunday morning, it's you gone. will be sans squirt. Yeah. Okay. This and is why deal, I don't drink it. And the deal is over. You can't go back and get any more. I don't know. Actually, I don't know how long it's uh, it's going for. It seems... I don't want to know. Yeah, it's probably safe if you don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably a good thing if you. I don't. have a problem. I'm trying to think. What am I like that with with uh with beverages? I don't think anything really. Like you said, I, I drink a lot of the sparkling s- sparkling waters. Mm-hmm. If there's a sodi pop that I have a weakness for, that is like 100% natural form, 
It is a caffeine free Pepsi. Mm. That is my weakness. I have that every once in a while. So um, why why caffeine free? I can't do caffeine. Just for, for those that. For, yeah, I, I guess it depends for for me. For certain people, if you if you deal with and have anxiety, the last thing you need to introduce your body is caffeine. That yep. Now, <laughs> now I probably need to do a better job of introducing some caffeine so I don't totally lose my tolerance for it. Um. But yeah, I try to stay away from the regular caffeine. So I usually do caffeine free and it tastes so good. So good. Um, my final thoughts is that it was announced yesterday in a post written a farewell that active development on one of my favorite games of all time, Wildermyth, is coming to an end. So there will oh, be no man. more DLC developed for it or anything like that. Um, but yeah, World Walker Games announced that they are no longer doing any active development on the game. So I would just like to, for myself, uh, give a round of applause. I will do it. You know, I, will, I will do that subtly to uh, to uh, World Walker Games and Wildermyth and the tool, this game that is such a riveting and uh, and, and and emotionally engaging tool of storytelling. Um, and that I can't wait to see what they come out with next. I don't I don't know if it will be a Wildermyth 2. I don't think that maybe will be the route they go. They go somewhere with it, but they'll go somewhere with it. And hopefully the game has been a, enough of a commercial success to like propel them to make more games and make make more projects. And I'll be following the studio like I do with with I think it's Playground and the Play Dead games. I think. I'm saying I follow them like I do, and I can't remember the name of the <laughs> studio. The people that that make uh, Limbo and Inside, like it's, mm -hmm. I'll be making sure to look out for that type of stuff. But yeah, that's my final thought. A farewell to Wildermyth. But I mean, look, you can still play it. Obviously, all the DLC is there and it's available. Go check right. it out. I've said it before. I'll say it again. It's a great. It's it's one of the great games, indie yeah. games that you can get. It all just comes have a to an end eventually. It all comes. How, to an when end. when did it come out? Wildermyth came out. Let's see if I can find out because I've got my um, I've got my uh, Steam up right now. It was released June fifteenth, twenty twenty one. Okay, so three years. That's not too bad. Three years of active development for this type of game. I think it's really cool. Um, also, there there does exist story mods. So one thing I was going to try to do eventually is actually write a story that players can actually import into the game and play through. So I think if you're someone that really wants to engage with the story, the story elements of the game, which obviously is the strength of it, it's a, it's a tactical combat game. So you think XCOM, you think, uh, you know, Final Fantasy Tactics or something like that. Um, it's kind of like in that vein, but the, the, the meat of it is the storytelling. And so... You'll still be able to experience new stories if you want to download user created stories, um, which well, is really cool. cool. I plan on doing that. Yeah, I plan on doing that as well as getting more of the DLC. So um, I have the game. It's been great. I haven't bought any of the DLC because I just haven't. I've been trying to play and beat games, but I think mm -hmm. I'm going to probably buy the DLC as just a show of support and gratitude for the for the, the developer for making the game. So. Oh, for sure. You know, people yeah. often talk about the bad. It's nice to bring up the good. 100%. On purpose. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and for sure. And I think they have an, a soundtrack you can get. So I'll, I'll try to maybe snag that too. Um, All right. But yeah, show some support for them because it was a great game. Great game. Great memories. I want to log back in and play some more. I think there's another mode or two I haven't beat yet. I haven't 100%ed the game on purpose for that. In those moments where I really, really, really miss it, I have something to jump back in for. But, right, um, gives you something to do. Yeah, exactly. My final thought. That leads us to the end of level 106 of the Thoughts and Players podcast. If you liked what you heard, subscribe to the podcast on your preferred podcast service, something like an Apple, something like an Overcast, something like a Google. I think it's YouTube Music now, or Spotify, or Amazon Music, or iHot Radio. Also, <laughs> You can follow the podcast on the socials. We are on Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. Um, and we are also on YouTube. 
where we upload video versions of the podcast each week. If you want to support us, besides that, if you want to support us monetarily, there's two ways you can do that. One is merch. Now, I don't have my, I don't have the shirt on, but my partner has the shirt and offer. You can buy merch like this shirt right here. All right. It, Look at that it. beauty. Finally got it, right? Like shirts. Or if you're someone that, you know, maybe is into technology, I mean, you got a phone lying around. We all do. There's phone cases, right? Get that. We also have stickers. I don't have my water bottle with me, but it has all the stickers. I will show you that. Uh, those are a couple ways you can support us at our spring store. That's always linked when we post the episodes. So look out for that. Um, and they're usually also in the description in the video uploads of the podcast. And then also we have a Patreon. We have three tiers, a $2, a $5, and a $7 tier, each offering good, the different bits of goodies and stuff like that. Um, the most recent thing that was put out was the episode two of the Game Dev Tycoon playthrough. Um, make sure you look out for that. I'm trying to think there'll probably be, in addition to that, there'll probably be another playthrough series that I upload up there. But instead of doing it in pieces where it's just episodes like this, I'll probably just do a whole series dump so it'll just be a playlist that everyone can go to and click through and watch at their own leisure um i had to figure out exactly what that game is it may be another strategy game or maybe a more linear game maybe i should start doing more story driven linear games instead of these crazy things where i have to <laughs> build a business with someone named black guy and see how that works out so make sure you stay tuned for that but that is it for me david did you have anything else you wanted to add Peace. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, and we will catch you on the next level.